Hello, I'm Janet. And I'm Amber. And we are two girls and a bottle of wine. Because men like boobs. And girls like wine. Happy Wednesday. Happy first day of Big Brother. I know. I'm so excited. So many exciting things. It's July. Yeah. The, there is firework shows. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you about your July 4th first. How was your July 4th? It was fine. Um, I'm not a July 4th, like, person, so I don't really plan a whole lot, and I'm not a big fireworks person either. Um, Nick <clears throat> had gotten ribs from um, his the meat place that he likes in Aurora. They looked like they came from a dinosaur. Oh. They were so big. I don't eat ribs, so um, I didn't have them. <laughs> but we took them to his sister's house and had them there. And <clears throat> uh, Nick was asleep by 730. <laughs> so I sat in the corner of my couch and watched the firework display um, from outside my window from the park that is across the street from us. You have a great big picture window. Yes. I yeah, love your window. Really nice. I do love that. So. I was very excited for the long weekend. Like, I was like, yes, long weekend. And Steve was out of town. And I was okay with that because he was home the entire month of June. So I was ready for a me weekend. And I kind of planned it that way. (coughs) So, like, I hadn't been paddleboarding all summer. And I was getting really cranky about it. (laughs) (laughs) And July 4th is kind of like one of those days and weekends where everyone heads to the reservoir. So Saturday, I got there at like 9. I paddleboarded for a few hours, then came home. And then Sunday, I did a cycle bar class and then went right to the reservoir. And I was like, this could be chance in it. That was because July 4th was Sunday. But I got in in time when I was leaving. I saw the sign saying it was closed, it was full, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sweet, sweet. So I paddleboarded Sunday, and then Steve got home. Um, His flight was delayed a lot. And I'm like, this sucks. We're going to be driving home and not going to be able to enjoy the fireworks. But, alas, he landed at 8. And on the way home, we started seeing all the fireworks. I'm like, this seems like a lot. And so we got out of the car at the house. And I was like, let me go grab a Truly, and we'll we'll walk around the neighborhood. Because there were fireworks just going off everywhere. And... It was amazing. And then we sat and we watched the park fireworks at 930. But it was, I have not seen that many fireworks ever. I think people just due to COVID lockdown last year, they're like, their fireworks budget was doubled. Yeah, I know. Our in-laws bought like $600 worth of fireworks. Stimulus (laughs) checks, man. They went to the fireworks stands. They did. That is what they did. It's crazy. It was it was fantastic. And our animals were fine leading up to mm-hmm. July 4th. But on July 4th, they were a little shook. Um, you know, we have a toilet paper roll that talks. And um, it was so loud and so close. It would go <laughs> boom and the toilet paper roll would talk. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> But the animals kind of adjusted. I gave them calming treats. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And I was asleep by like 1030. Yeah. I think I still went to bed somewhat early because I've been waking up, trying to get up earlier on the weekends than I have been and just trying to get moving and going. But I wish I could sleep in on the weekends. I don't have the problem of getting up early. Like 530, 6 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday. I'm like, awake. I used to be like that, Maybe but recently... I have been sleeping until like eight or nine and it's just, I don't like sleeping that late. I get that. Cause it feels like you've lost part of your time off time. Your me time. Yeah, exactly. So, so. I get that. Well, happy birthday, America. Right. And Good we, time. we are both July babies. We are. <laughs> you just don't get as excited about it as I do. Mm, no, I don't understand. I do and I think I say this every year. I've yeah. been talking about my birthday. We were going to go to Nashville, but that got canceled. Oh, no. Why? Uh, the girls just couldn't commit. <laughs> oh, sad. It's all good. So you're going to have to story the heck out of your Nashville trip. And I know you won't do what I would do, but 
Maybe if you could just walk by Miranda Lambert's restaurant. Story you can tag. Walk by. Story and tag Janet. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> and I when are you that. going? Um, we leave at 7 p.m. on the 22nd. Nice. And we get back on your birthday. Nice. Mm-hmm. And we are podcasting on the 21st, and you're still committed to that. Yes. I mean, I'm still going to work on the 22nd. I know, I know, but like me, if I were leaving, I'd be like, so <laughs> I need to feel like I've got my world under control before I travel. Oh, yeah, no. I'll just plan out my outfit and then get it all ready, and I'll probably just bring everything to work and go to the airport from work. Nice. Yeah, I'm not nice. worried. I have an ex- unexpected trip that popped up. I'm going to Missouri on the 15th. Oh. Yeah, moving my dad from Missouri oh, to Colorado. Well, that's fun. Yeah, so the Nashville trip getting canceled actually works <laughs> out because I can use that vacation time for this. And actually, the state of Colorado um, has a mandatory sick leave now. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. And so, <laughs> since I'm helping my father due to his medical condition move from one nursing home to the other, I was actually able to submit some sick time. Interesting. Yeah. Well, As of January 1st. Did you already have sick time? Because we did not. So we originally had sick time where we would get like 2.3 hours or some weird random number um, every pay period. And then um, a couple of years ago, many years ago, probably like five or six years ago, they stopped doing that. And so I had accrued like 330 sick hours. And um, then when I got cancer, I used some of that for my surgery when I took um, a couple weeks off. And so I still have 195 hours. You had cancer and you still have sick time. Wow. Yes. Because <laughs> I worked through all of my chemo. <laughs> you crazy girl. You crazy. Oh. So, and then I have surgery coming up in October and I'm trying to convince my boss is like, you need to take the full six weeks. And I was like, do I know? I feel like I could like take two weeks of no contact and then like two weeks at home and then come in. Amber, those of us that won't don't want to have children don't get to experience maternity leave. So you should take this six weeks. Oh, it's so hard. I'm with your boss. Mm, it's too hard. It's so hard. You only live once. You got it. I know, but I'm going to be living sitting on the bed doing absolutely jack shit. Why not work and get shit done instead of coming read, back to you can listen 8 million to- emails? After like a week, they'll get that you're not there and they'll, your out of office will be on. You would think. No, I get it. I get it. Because even like Monday was a holiday and I work with Can- Canadians and Australians and I came back to 100 emails. I'm like, seriously, guys. I even had the 4th just... of July like, hey, guys, 4th of July. We I have nails right. that are 4th of July and I'm a dorky American and they didn't pay attention. Yeah. I mean, I just got my emails down to seven which is a miracle because for the last month and a half, they've been at almost 200 every day. Wow. So, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm getting there. You're scratching. You're nervous. You hate talking about this. I know. I don't want to take the time off. I can't. I can't. I don't like it. Balance, girl. My new boss is really helping me with the balance. If it was six weeks of, like, traveling, sure. But it's six weeks of pain and just sitting there like a bump on a log. I can't move. I can't work out. I'm just going to sit there like I was quarantined again. And I didn't go through the quarantine like everybody else did. I mean, I did, but I didn't. I still left my house and went to work. So, like, I mean, outside of when I had COVID, Mm -hmm. I was definitely quarantined for that two and a half week, three week period. But I don't like it. Oh, goodness. Well, let's jump into what we got. Yeah. You want to talk about the first thing? (laughs) You mean you don't want to talk about the first thing? Not really. 
It's fine. So, I'm happy for happy people. <laughs> um, over the weekend, it was announced that Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani uh, actually got married. So I know that it was recently announced that they were engaged. Um, and I guess uh, they tied the knot in Oklahoma. They got engaged in October 2020, but they've been dating since 2015. And um, I guess that uh, she was, uh, Gwen was sending a video, a selfie video, saying that she got kidnapped by her family to celebrate that she was getting married. And um, there's been multiple articles coming out about it and how um, Shelton jokes that his wedding would be pretty classless if he was in charge of planning it. But at the same time, he was very interested in making sure that it was everything that they wanted it to be and everything that Gwen wanted it to be. And so... um, it was very sweet, and I think he built a mansion for them in Oklahoma. Like, yeah, the house he lived in with Miranda is not where they're living. Yeah, no, not at all. It's a big white mansion. I know. It, I think it was cute. I think they're cute. Yeah, her dress. She had two dresses by Vera Wang, and they were both wonderful. How does she look that good? At isn't she like fifty? Yeah, she's, uh, they announced, or they had the ages. Yeah, Gwen is 51 and Blake is 45. Yeah, she looks fantastic. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, she looks amazing. I'm still team Ben and Jen. I will always be team Blake and Miranda. It's hard. Well, Ben and Jen are getting back. Oh, wrong. Ben and Jen are getting back. Sorry. (sighs) Jen and Brad. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know Ben and Jen are back together. I I don't really care about them, but I said the wrong name. Um, Brad and Jen. I know. I think they should date now. Or I think Jen and um, David Schwimmer should date now. Right? After that Friends special? I don't know. I don't know. That would be weird. (laughs) No. That would be so weird. I feel like, like, I feel like Miranda found the right equation. It's her and someone that you don't, it's not a well-known person. I feel like when celebrities get together, it's just a lot. Yeah. And I think that a lot of celebrities say that is that, and you tend to see that too, is that the women, or women, the couples that um, get together with other famous individuals, um, they struggle a lot more. Um, at least from what we see, but when they have somebody who isn't really in the business, it's nice because, I mean, I guess I could see it both ways. If there's somebody in the business, they kind of understand where you're coming from and what you're dealing with. But there's, I mean, outside of Ben or now you have me doing it, Brad and Jen. Sorry. I mean, (laughs) there's very few couples that I feel like have the same status. Um, and so one of them is always a little bit more popular than the other the majority of the time. So yeah. It could be hard that way, too. Like but. when Miranda and Blake started dating, it was like, yeah. Blake, what are you doing, Miranda? You're slumming it. And then he got the voice and he kind of rose and yeah. it probably jacked with their dynamic. Oh, I'm sure. I have no doubt. Speaking of Jen... You shared an uh, article yeah. about her positivity, and she rescued another dog. She did rescue another dog, along with also Kaylee Cuoco, who just recently rescued um, a dog as an well. An elderly guess, dog, I, which yeah. I, I want to... His name is Larry? I think so. I want to be open to doing that, but I get so emotionally attached. <sighs> I was broken when we lost Butterfly. Like I know. Oh, it's so hard. So hard. So hard. I know. So what's what's this article about Jen? So this um, article about Jennifer Aniston is a lot about just her keeping her positivity. And I think it spoke to me a little bit just because we're all trying to find the new normal. We're all struggling a little bit, I think, with it in some level. But I also think that in the workforce, um, we're really struggling to stay positive because those of us that are still in our same positions are really challenged with coming back into the workforce, but also losing a lot of people. I mean, I was telling Nick just this week, we have four people leaving our department on Friday and um, that's resignations. And I mean, that's, 
on top of the 15 that were already short. So I just thought it was interesting. And I know that, you know, famous people, it's easy to be happy, but we don't know their lives and we don't know what it's like to be them. And so um, I just thought that it would be interesting to kind of hear from Jennifer Aniston, especially since she's recently back in the news a little bit more with the recent um, Friends reunion. But um, it talks about how she also has, I found it interesting that she has a tattoo that reads 1111 on the inside of her wrist. Mm -hmm. And that when she sets it on the clock, she does make a wish. And that's something that I've always like heard about, but I thought that was cute. Um, But anyways, um, she kind of talks about how she lost her dad and um, because she lost her dad a couple years ago, who was the, he was a star on Days of Our Lives, which Mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, I I knew that. I used to watch Days of Our Lives. And when I found out a long time ago that was her dad, I was like, oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. So I was never a big Days of Our Lives fan, but I do know who her dad is. And I guess during lockdown, she was just cleaning out her drawers. And so she started to go down memory lane about her dad. And she talked about that a lot in regards to the pandemic life. And um, it was she kind of took it in as it was nice to reset. Mm -hmm. She got to be with just her and her dogs and she really got that time away. And I feel like for individuals like her, it probably was really nice to get to be locked in your home, not have anything to really be doing and really get that downtime and the paparazzi not on your back. Um, So I thought that was cool. She rescued her um, 70 pound baby and um, his name is Clyde. He's a cuddler. He's absolutely adorable. He's 70 Um, pounds. I know. I love it. I'm a small dog girl. I know you're a big dog girl. Yes. Yes, I do. And she also has a dog named Sophie. And Sophie's not super affectionate, but Clyde is. And so she really liked that when she was home alone. She had Clyde to kind of cuddle with. Um, She didn't really do much with do-it-yourself self-care. She talked about her exercise routine in this. Um, I mean, this was all just a bunch of different, like, questions for her and what she's been doing. Um, she's she n- said that she... Oh, go ahead. I think you were about to say the same thing I was. She said that she doesn't think she's open to marriage again. She just yeah. wants to find a partner and live life together. And I get that. Like, when Steve and I started dating, he'd been married three times. And he's like, do you... Are you wanting marriage? And I was like, yeah, just once. And yeah. so if you want to be that that'd be great if not (laughs) then let me know so i can keep on keeping on um seven years later he finally proposed uh but (laughs) steve and i are fantastic i love him to death nothing is amiss but if down the road we were no longer together i i would not want to remarry sure what are your thoughts about that so i don't I don't think I would be closed down to the idea. I think that um, if something happens or something wherever it happened to Nick or whatever the case may be, um, I think that I would just be open. I think that we can't completely close down to something that we don't know what it would be like. And I think a lot of people end up finding great love in, in their 60s, 70s, 80s. That's true. And it's, it's sweet. And so, um, you know, if that's something that, ends up being where my life leads, then that's kind of how it is. But I'm not going to say that I absolutely am going to search for it, but I'm not going to say I don't want it either. Got it. So. Yeah. And Um. I could change my mind. When I was 12, I thought I wanted babies. And then when I was 24, I was like, Mm, you know. (laughs) And now is the time. And Mm, yeah, no, no. Um, and I know I kind of rambled on a little bit about Jennifer's items, but, um, it's easy to ramble about Jennifer Aniston because she is fantastic person dead or alive that you'd like to have lunch with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, for sure. And like, she talks about, they ask her, what is your last moment of bliss? And she talks about a sunset Mm -hmm. and how it's just simple. There's no real markers, but when you have the time to take that time, try and do it. Like you're saying, there isn't always the greatest life work balance for some of us like myself Mm -hmm. but when I have the moment to look at a sunrise or to look at the sky or do something like that like take that time and during her pandemic days you know she started doing a lot more reading and writing and meditating and that's and painting yeah and she does yoga practice and so I think that's also what helps keep her grounded and I think a lot of people 
find it that way. And one of the quotes that she has is life is too short. I have a no asshole rule. <laughs> and um, I think that's great because I think it applies to anything, whether it be in a romantic relationship um, or in real life, like, like with your other friendships and work relationships and stuff. If you're going to be an asshole, I just, I don't have time for it. Like I don't, I'm finding myself getting more and more fed up with certain things and being like, I just don't want to deal with it. So. And we don't have to. And she talks about how um, intermittent fasting comes easy to her because she's not a breakfast person. She likes her coffee with her collagen. That kind of leads in to another article that you shared. Um, Do you take collagen currently? So I don't. But when I was at Whole Foods over the weekend, I saw a bunch of waters that – so I I think, as you know, but – I don't really like flavored waters. I try and I just don't like them. And, um, but I saw a bunch of really f- fun colored um, flavored waters that were collagen water. So it kind of made me think about it. And then I read her article and I know that she's a big collagen water drinker. Um, she also does like collagen protein and stuff like that. But I have seen a lot more conversations about collagen water. And so I just thought it was interesting and wondering if this is going to be like the new craze when we all started taking chia seeds or, you know, flax or kombucha. Like there's just all these things that we do. But I also think that there's some really good benefits to to the collagen um, and taking it in. So I just thought it was interesting to try and find an article that was more recent and talked about it. Well, I put powdered collagen in my coffee every day. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Because with Cycle Bar, I'm afraid my knees are going to die and oh. and stuff. And it's just collagen is good for you. And now with the liquid collagen, I'm intrigued. You know, and I should because I have been having a lot of issues with my joints. Some of the meds that I'm on cause some pain for me. And so it is something that I should probably consider, especially since I do spin at home. Mm-hmm. Um, but it says that... Collagen supplements can also benefit, like, the health of your hair, skin, nails, on top of your joints. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I would like to point out that this article, um, the photo of the liquid collagen, if you see it, it looks like a penis. (gasps) It does. And it's like it's squirted a little bit. So it's like a jizzy penis. Yes. I was like, why does that look so much like a penis? (laughs) Okay. But... um, So it says that collagen actually accounts for 33% of your body's total protein mass, which is kind of crazy to me because I don't really feel like we hear people talk a whole lot about collagen. No. So that's kind of a large amount, especially with total protein mass. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's 28 different types of collagen in human tissues. And those have been identified by scientists. So I'm not just like randomly saying numbers, which I do sometimes. Um, but the most abundant is known as type one and it makes up 90% of the collagen in the body. Well, skin contains collagens type one, two, and three. And that's what kind of gives us our strength and elastic- elasticity. So, um, and the benefits of collagen. Can I go over that? Yes, please. Cause I think this is why I originally started, cause I've been putting collagen in my coffee for a couple of years now. Um, but recently I'm like. <laughs> With all this cycling, I just want to try and make sure my knees are good. There's a lo- there's a lack of research when it comes to liquid collagen, but according to a 2020 review, collagen supplementation in general may may I love how it says may it may yeah. slow the formation of lines and wrinkles. That was oh, the original okay. reason I started. <laughs> Improve skin's ability to absorb absorb and maintain moisture. Reduce skin pigmentation or darkening, improve skin elasticity and firmness, encourage skin cell rejuvenation, improve skin texture, improve skin density and thickness, improve wound healing time, reduce cellulite. Amen, Jesus. And that's why I'm going to start taking it. <laughs> yes. I recommend the powder if you could. You drink coffee, yeah? I do, yeah. Yeah. It, well, you can get the flavorless powder and you don't even oh, know it's good. there. Um, improve joint and bone health and improve nail strength and growth. Those last three, I mean, joint and bone health alone. Um, I have to do a bone scan every single year. So, um, it's always good to keep up on my bone health. Yeah. You want to avoid osteoporosis. Yeah. It's a good time. 
I hear. <laughs> yeah. So this is really interesting. I need to um, I need to look into this liquid collagen because maybe I can add more collagen. Yeah. And they also say that even if you're not wanting to do like the liquid collagen, um, there are a few foods that contain collagen. It's just a lower level. Mm -hmm. So things like beef, chicken and pork, eggs, dairy products, um, bone broths or bone products. Um, and then there's also items such as like algae, seaweed, um, I salmon, love seaweed. jellyfish, which I'm not sure why that's on there. Cause I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be eating or touching a jellyfish, but what do I know? Octopuses. I know. I Octopuses love, aren't bad. I love baby octopus salad. So good. Oh yeah. So good. That's a good point. Urchins. I do not recommend eating sea urchin. It's not good. It's kind of spongy. It's the only sushi, yeah, I've ever spit back out. I have tried every type of sushi, and that was the one I was like, yeah, same thing. Yeah. I'm like, this is like I'm eating a dirty kitchen sponge. Sorry, oh. I had to sneeze. Yeah. No worries. Um, and then you can also get more vitamin C by eating foods because um, the vitamin C helps to synthesize the collagen. So such things as citrus fruits, berries, bell peppers, and kiwi. I need to add vitamin C to my life because I take the collagen, but not the vitamin C. Oh, yeah. I take um, collagen. I take vitamin C every day, but I do not take collagen. So might be time. It is. Yes. I will add vitamin C and you can add collagen and we'll come back and check in with what that looks like. So, you know what we forgot? What we're drinking? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a so, pause. What you drinking, Amber? So mine looks like it's green, but I am drinking a rosé. It's 14 hands, um, the unicorn rosé bubbles, which is one of my favorites. But I put brew glitter teal green in there. Oh. So it has some glitter, and that's why it's like greenish color. It looks like pond water. Yeah. Thankfully, <laughs> it doesn't taste like pond water. <laughs> I am drinking um, Cupcake Prosecco. Ooh, no Truly today? I do have a Truly as my second stand-up, because I can't drink two Proseccos on a work night. What? Oh, I have a second rosé from Infinite Monkey Theorem. There you go. We, we've always got backups. Got to have backups. Always. That's right. Um, let's see. Speaking of rosé, we got the six-bottle guide for rosé that you shared. Yeah, I was on a roll with links and articles. Yeah, all Apple News. But I think that, I know, sorry about that. No, um, you're fine. I think that rosé is a really great wine for any time. But mm-hmm. I also think that it's a really great summer wine because it's not very heavy like a red wine. And I don't drink white wine. So there's that. Um, so I thought this would be just like a fun little article to talk about um, different types of bottles of wines. And so one of the first ones that they start talking about is words that I can't pronounce, but it's like Sagne. 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 Yeah. Versus direct press. So the word I can't pronounce actually means bleeding in French. And it's a technique for rosé production. So the red grapes mm, macerate, macerate. Oh my God, people listening to us sometimes, I swear. I know. They must think that we don't know how to read or speak. (laughs) Um, In a tank to allow the skins and seeds to add color, flavor, and texture to red wine. And a portion of the liquid is then siphoned out early or bled off to make the rosé. Whereas direct press rosés are made from red wine grapes, often picked slightly underripe. Underripe. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Um, harvesting early can create the rosé with higher acidity and crispness. So the grapes are clusters are pressed and the juice has very brief, if any skin contact, which creates a wine with a pale hue. Um, and so your direct press rosés often tend to be more delicate flavors with delicate aromas. And they generally exhibit lower alcohol levels where that French rosé that we were talking about, um, are, oh, sorry, Southern French rosés. Uh, from Provence and many from Languedoc and Roussillon are fine examples of the direct press style. I was trying to go off script so I didn't have to say those words and it bit me in the ass. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, wine one, 
Typically, darker-hued rosé is employed some use of Sagne. Though that isn't always the case, check the back of the bottle to see if production methods are listed. And for wine two, which is the direct press rosés, look to the pale pink wines of Provence if you want to try those. So look at the back of your rosé. Does it say what kind of rosé it is? Uh, it has a picture of a unicorn floaty <laughs> on it. And it says that it pairs well with pool parties. <laughs> um, oh my so goodness. other than that, no. No. Okay. All right, this next one, cool versus warm climate. While rosé is a refreshing warm weather wine, some of the most exciting examples come from less temperature areas of the world. These cool climate rosés show higher acidity and lower alcohol. For cool climate bottlings, a notable impression of minerality can emerge as well as precise flavors. Besides focused acidity and freshness in cool climate wines, there's often a beautiful restraint too. Flavors often can present hints of tart red berries like currants, underripe strawberries, and raspberries, depending on the grape variety. That sounds yummy. Yeah. And so on the other it, side of the spectrum yeah. is the warm climate rosé. I got distracted by pictures. There were so many I pictures. Know, the pictures are pretty. <laughs> These wines are generally lush in character and deliver heady aromas and flavors. They can offer everything from floral notes to like rose to uh, cornucopia. A cornucopia. Yeah. I got the word of fruits <laughs> like ripe watermelon, strawberry, ripe peach and even banana. I want to try a banana Yay. wine. I know, <laughs> um, right? Winemakers, I'm look for that. yeah, winemakers in hotter areas can struggle to hang onto some acidity, so it's crucial to pick grapes at the right moment. The best examples um, exhibit ample acidity for balance, so the wine is tangy and refreshing instead of flat. Consider quality selections from warmer regions in California, Spain, Southern Italy, Australia, and South Africa. Whoa. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> Amber changed her look very dramatically. I was reading and then I turned and I was like, well. Yeah. Mixing it up. You want to talk about the unoaked versus the oaked? Yes. So um, a well-made unoaked rosé is the essence of youth in a bottle. Uh, many have an... God, why do they have to put so many words in these things? So many words. Ephemeral. Sure. Quality. A f- I don't know what that word is. They're light, sheer, and delicate in flavor, and the aromas are reminiscent of the first strawberries or cherries of the semen. Semen. Yep. Oh, my God. That just happened. <laughs> Maybe season? Maybe season? Yeah, is I it think season? it was season. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, not That's semen. That's why we, we list this as an explicit contest. Con- Holy crap. Content, because you never know what Amber's going to say. Yeah. Um, I didn't even try that time. Okay. Um, or freshly picked flowers. These are wines that whisper, seize the day and drink me now. So many, 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 oh my God, I cannot talk. Many wineries make unoaked rosés in smaller quantities as they're not designed to age for more than a year or two. And so over time, the subtle aromas and flavors of ripe young fruit fall away. So you may be left with some pleasing acidity and perhaps Hints of minerality, of herbal tones, but the fruit largely falls out with age, where your oaked roses are a very different creature. And with those, the winemaker seeks to give the wine summery flavors, a, to give the wines summery flavors, a kind of immorality, immortality by aging the rosé in oak. Oh, God. Um, to some, aging rosé in an oak barrel is like adding fluorescent lace ruffles to a classic Chanel jacket. But there can be plenty of positive aspects to oak aging, even for rosé. So during the time spent in oak, flavor, fruit flavors can deepen and resemble those of a light red wine. And the oak adds to its own imprint with warm spices, vanilla, or toasted nuts, which matches well with the cherries of the semen, <laughs> um, along with a richer texture. So let's go grab so, some rosé. Yeah. Yes. I'm down. I have like six bottles of rosé, honestly, in my house right now. Before we jump into Big Brother news and Bachelorette catch-up, 
Big Brother, Big Brother, Big Brother. It's premiere night. <laughs> it is premiere night, which I really didn't realize until I put that article on our page. Like, I forgot that it was July 7th. And so... We both knew this. Like, two podcasts ago, we were like, July 7th. Whoa. <sighs> I know. I just forget. Oh. Things happen. Mm. So... Well, this article that you shared from CheatSheet.com. I had to grab that before you messed that word up. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Julie Chen Moonves, she is the queen. She is the queen of Big she Brother. Is. She has revealed some of the game changing twists from Premiere Night, which is tonight. We'll see. Yep. We'll see. Um, so it's premiering tonight. There's going to be a lot of moments this summer that are going to force the house guests to make decisions they've never had to make before. Um, and again, it could make some of their housemates happy, but it could also upset them as well. We've seen that before. Like here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to choose this, but then the house guests all have to eat slop. Uh, yeah. So us Big Brother fans, we are the most loyal fans out there. Um, and we've been eager to find out how the twists are going to work. So ahead of the premiere, which happens tonight, can I say that again? Um, Julie explained how the offer will work during the launch. The host of the competition show said that as soon as all um, 16 house guests enter the game, they will be forced to play in teams. The minute a group of four moves in, they're going to have to compete right away. And the winner of the competition becomes a team captain who gets to pick their teammates at the end of the night. Mm. Right. After the team captains form their teams, they will then go ahead and go head to head to become the first head of household. It is after this competition that Julie will make the tempting offer to the winner. At the end of the night, when they think it's a time to go to bed and everything is good and they're safe for a week, she's going to present the head of household with an offer that he or she probably cannot refuse. It's a double or nothing, so that's a pretty big deal. It's the summer of big risks and big rewards. It's a summer that we're calling the BB Beach Club, and it's a beach club that's kind of Monte Carlo, if you will. It's a good season hmm. if you're a gambler. Did you look at the pictures of the house? No. Why? Well, because I saw that article, and then I saw the article about the girl who um, already got evicted before she was ever even in the house. Um, Why? And then I never... Uh, so she tested positive for COVID. Oh, bummer. And she doesn't know how... Like, she was stating that she had abided by all the rules, but for some reason, she will not be participating. But she also appears to be bald. <gasps> no, not her! I think she has alopecia. Yeah, so um, she is the one who ended up getting uh, COVID. Christy Val Valdesari. I don't know um, names and, yet. Well, and they did say that she is actually one of, um, she was already a fan favorite um, ever since she was announced. But unfortunately, she was forced to leave the game. And after rumors started, she decided to come out and state that while she didn't want to announce, like she feels fine. She just somehow ended up contracting COVID. So, um, she is not sure what will happen, but she will not be in this year. And so I got all distracted by that and never looked at the pictures of the houses of the house. I mean, that's a bummer. That's a huge bummer. I was really excited to see her yeah. rock her less no hair look because she's beautiful. Yes, she is. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> All right, mm. let's jump into Bachelor news. Tyler let's Cameron has a birthday present for me. <laughs> he does, which I don't know how I missed that he was coming. I feel like we've talked about it maybe. I don't know. But he's coming out with a book. I don't think I knew this. I don't think I knew this either. <laughs> like, I just happened to, like, come across it, and I was like, did I miss this somewhere? Yeah. Because Tyler Cameron coming out with a book, I feel like, is a big deal. And it might be one that I actually read, which will be my first Bachelor, Bachelorette, um... Because you didn't read Colton's? Book. I never read Colton's. I didn't read Ben's. I haven't read any of the others. Um, but I am kind of interested in his. It's titled um, You Deserve Better. 
And it comes out on July 27th as a uh, birthday present to you. Thanks, Tyler. Right. Um, And it does talk a lot about his relationship with Tyler and Hannah. And uh, he has already gone. And I think that's kind of commendable. He's already talked to Hannah and let her know, like, what's in the book, what's going to come out. And um, I think that's nice to let her know, like, prepare her for what's about to take place. Good point. Good point. We'll have to get that. Now, this article that you shared about the the Bachelorette couple that doesn't include Katie. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess Twitter, who is Twitter is its own little world. It has a new favorite couple on The Bachelorette, and it doesn't include (laughs) Katie Thurston. During a brief moment on Monday night's episode, the camera panned to Connor B. and Greg cuddling. And now fans are calling for them to get their own spinoff. Can't help but notice Greg and Connor B. have chemistry, and that is a twist I could happily welcome and am hoping for, to be honest, tweeted The Bachelor Podcast. Can we discontinue The Bachelorette and continue with Greg and Connor's journey? Yeah, I just thought it was hilarious. And I, when I've been watching the episodes um, from the last two weeks, because I watched them all together last night, I thought it was interesting that I noticed a lot of camaraderie and kind of that um friendship kind of aspect that we've been missing over the last couple of seasons where they are very pally they're very touchy their arms are around each other and i kind of like it so i just thought this article was funny that is hilarious (laughs) do you want to jump into the bachelorette recap for the last two weeks yes let's do it so we, we are going to flash back to June 28th's episode, and this is July 7th. So it feels like ages ago for people that watched it back then, but we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I watched it all last night, so I'm good. Right. So before this episode, we saw Thomas um, being ganged up on because he said that he had thoughts about being the next Bachelor. Who hasn't if you're the guys in this show, Right. He was just kind of a bonehead that shared it. Yeah, I'm not a huge Thomas fan. I haven't been a Thomas fan since the beginning, but I mean, come on, people. Right. At the same time, like you, there's 30 of you coming into the house. There's a possibility that one of you is going to be the bachelor. So, but it all depends because he did share during that one meeting or the one group date that he wasn't there originally for the right reasons anyways. So that's really kind of where all of this spiraled from. And so he kind of just screwed himself at the end of the day. Yeah. So. And then we have a truth or dare group date. Which was very interesting. I was a little jealous during portions of this. Why? Because they got to eat some amazing shit. Can I? I love mashed potatoes. They got to eat mashed potatoes and gravy. They had pasta. They ate like 400 calories of Twinkies. (laughs) And it's men. Which means that even though Mike P was complaining about it and that he hasn't eaten carbs in so long, blah, 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 that mother effer was going to go back to his house, take a poop, make a little run, and was going to already be down the weight. So I'm not really feeling that sorry for them. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But it yep. also um, included waxing and hot peppers. Waxing and butt crack. Yeah. I mean, I've had my vagina waxed a few times. And you have? Always... I've never yeah. have. Yeah, I've had it done a few times. Um, and sometimes they surprise you and they'll wax your little, like, taint butthole area. And that's a little surprising. So... Mm, you used that word. <laughs> I did. Taint. Um, and <laughs> during Trey's time with Katie, he, he brought up. Thomas accusing him of being calculating and manipulative. But before train, there was a Taco Bell presentation that I was very jealous of. And I so I will be eating Taco Bell this evening. <laughs> um, but yes, so Trey brought up um, Thomas. His, yeah. Thomas is no good. And so Katie spirals. And him and Tom, or him and Andrew actually get into it a little bit. And, um, There was also some guy on this date that I don't think I've legit ever seen. Which one? So he's the guy with, like, the big ears, a little bit darker skin. I believe his name is Josh. 
because he does get a rose later on. Okay. Alert. But I've legit never seen this man before in any of these episodes. I don't have any notes about Josh. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I put that on. I was there, it's like a bullet point. I'm like, some guy in the date that I've never seen before is there. But I understand Andrew's point. Oh, I absolutely understand Andrew's point. Don't bring it to Katie. Saying, it'll it'll right. work. It all comes out in the wash. And I said that before the Miranda song. Exactly. And he says, you know, focus on your own relationship. Like, that's what we need to be here to do. And um, a lot of other people also agree with Andrew. There have been some articles that I did not put on our Google Docs um, that people were talking about how you need to let Katie figure it out for herself. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I liked it kind of in the beginning, but now they seem to be like just going from guy to guy to guy um, and you're just kind of picking it out. Um, so I think that's what Andrew was trying to say. Like, if you're confident in your relationship, then just let that be. Uh, so that's interesting. But in the end, Trey gets the group rose. He does. So she liked that, I guess. <sighs> yeah, it's hard because I feel like there are times where I just wish that they would listen to the bachelor or like the bachelor and bachelorettes that come to them and are like, Oh my God, this guy is horrible. And they never listen. And we're always mad. And now she's listening and we're still mad. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just no winning much like many of things in life. That's true. And then Tasha comes in. Oh yeah. And announces that, um, there's a new mystery man. Yeah, and she's being very cryptic. Uh huh. And assures Katie that the new guy is genuine and a legitimate candidate for love. Yeah. And that's and where Blake Moines, is that his name, Moines? Yeah. Makes his I return? Think it's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to say, because this goes on for multiple moments, um, it carries into episode five as well. But when it comes to Blake, there's comments, because Tasha makes it and other people make it, that he's swapping bachelorettes. And now this is going to be his third bachelorette. Let's give the kid a break, okay? Let's remember Nick Vile, who I hate because he's vile. Um, He went from bachelorette to bachelorette to bachelorette. Blake didn't have a choice True. in the matter, really. And remember, he, he was the one out. that studied for Claire. Right. And he got there. Claire ended up going along with Dale. And they brought in Tasha. So it's not like he's gone on three seasons. He was on one season where everything got shook up. And mm -hmm. now he thinks that he has a connection with Katie, who he has already had conversations with. So it's also, again, not like Nick. And there he is. So... We can move on, but I just wanted to point this out because I'm a Blake fan, even though he's a little weird. Um, but I feel like he's getting a bad rap for not a great reason. So. And they haven't ever met before, but they've been messaging on Instagram. Yep. And he explained to Katie that why he risked coming on the show to alleviate the what ifs. Um, had he not tried. Um yeah, she's hesitant to welcome him. And, but I mean, I think this is what it's all about. This it is. What is. the journey is about is what if. Like, you don't want to get in together with somebody and then be like, what about that connection that I felt with Blake through the DMs? Whatever. So. And, and then, who? meanwhile, the men continue to talk about Thomas. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and then Thomas went directly to Katie um, in her hotel room. And he he it doesn't he was like I'm here for you now now yeah I it's just the way that he talks and the way that he looks at her like there's just something where you're like yeah it's not really genuine mm -hmm. I don't really see it but she says you know what let me have my rose ceremony and let me think about things and she wants to go into the rose ceremony without the drama and that is not what she gets she gets every man coming in there and saying almost every man mm -hmm. and coming in there and being like well if you want to ask me anything but michael is the savior that comes in and doesn't talk about any of it right 
So, and during and then, the rose ceremony, Thomas apologizes oh to everyone. So awkward. It was horrible. Mm. It's just horrible. And then she has her rose ceremony, so she gives her roses out. This was a baller move. Oh my god, I about shit myself. So Justin, who um, he already has a rose, or he's been given a rose. He has been all over social media with memes because of his facial expressions. But when she calls Thomas's name and everyone freaks out and Justin's eyes get so big and Aaron is like, what the fuck? But he walks up and she backs the fuck up and Mm -hmm. tells him off like I have never seen before. (sighs) And then... I don't think anyone got the final rose. There was one rose left. She called his name, and then I don't think anybody got it, did they? Because I never saw her give it to anybody. No. Four guys went home. Two guys that I don't know. Right. Which, and then Christian and Thomas mm-hmm. um, go home. But I don't think she ever gave anybody that final rose. Yeah. I don't think so either. I don't have any... Yeah, I didn't notice that. I think... My brain went to the final rose. Thomas thought he was getting it. The guys thought Thomas was getting it. And she's like, psych. Yeah. But then she walks to naked Blake's door. Who is naked when she arrives. Yes. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you want him to say? I was like, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Because at one point during the rose ceremony, somebody was like, it's midnight, dude. Right. What are we doing here? But anyways, she offers him to stay to see where it can go. Yeah. So Blake is on the season. And that brings us to this week's episode. Yes. Where, of course, which I thought would happen is Katie and Katie, technically, Katie and Caitlin um, kind of are walking together and talk about when Caitlin brought Nick into the season. Mm -hmm. Hence the gentleman who went from a second season, by the way. Um, and, uh, what that was like and are the men going to be mad? And of course the men are going to be mad. Like Mm -hmm. you're, that just is what it is. It's halfway through the season. So, um, and the poor men have no idea what's about coming, what's about to happen. And they're just sitting there waiting for the date card. Yes. I felt bad for them. Yeah. Um, and Katie acknowledged that. Blake's presence was frustrating. Like, she acknowledged it. That was good of her. Probably prompted by producers. Um, And she wanted to get it out of the way. It it makes total sense. She doesn't want to jack up the whole whole dynamic. I think I've used that word more in this podcast than I have in five years. Um, She doesn't want to jack up the dynamic if there's no chemistry. She needs to find out. Yeah, because both her and Blake try to announce it after he arrives and the men know that he's coming back in. And I think it's good. Blake at least addresses it where the other men who always join in the middle of the season come in and they're like, oh, well, I'm here. She obviously wanted me here for a reason. Right. But he tries to be at least somewhat proactive about it. But of course, when the date card arrives, he almost dies. When he gets the one-on-one card, which I don't know how anybody didn't see coming, but you're not him. You're not in the moment. And they have a lovely date. They went horseback riding, and they they chatted. Which he hates horses, FYI. So you know that was planned. <laughs> they have a ridiculous makeout session that I fast forwarded through because that was a lot of tongue that I didn't want to hear. And they just seem to really connect. They did, yeah. And, you know, they go into their evening session where um, I find it very interesting. I I don't know if it really was his prompting or producer's prompting. I don't know. But um, he does ask her about her sex positivity and where it came from. And she does open up and tell her story. And I think that's great because she was hesitant originally to tell that story. And now she has to tell it a second time. And you can tell that it's emotional for her. But he takes it really well. So. And then they get a private concert from Lane Hardy. Yeah, from Lane Hardy. Um, but Blake gets a rose. 
Blake does get a rose. I like Blake, so I'm excited. Yes. But. Um, and then next, we have Wells Adams. Yeah. I love Wells, him. Um, I love him. Group date with 13 guys and mm-hmm. Wells and some guy named Franco. Mm-hmm. It's the Bachelorette's the Bash shorts. Ball Battle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Wells was legit wearing the shortest shorts I've ever seen in my life. They could have been boy short underwear at that point. <laughs> um, my best, the best part was that Katie set it up as like they were going to be these famous like superstars, and the guys were like, Brendan was like, I have no idea who the fuck this person is. So that's great. <laughs> and the game is sportsy. It's like a basketball, soccer, dodgeball, and football mix. Yeah, in weird um, outfits that are like yes. from the. Um, I don't know, but they're like jock straps over their shoulders. I don't know how else to explain. Yeah. So, and it gets, Hunter starts to get really aggressive. Mm-hmm. And it kind of brings out the testosterone in a lot of the other men, which leads to poor Michael A. getting just smoked by Justin. He got he got he to hang out with the medics. Out. He did a little bit. It was It was rough to watch. And Katie, Katie ended the game at that point. <laughs> yeah, which was good for her. And much like these group dates end, where normally the winners end up going along with Katie, she was like, you're all winners. <laughs> so they all got a trophy. They all got their participation trophy and got to hang out with her for the evening, which Justin and many others were stoked about. Right, but Hunter got the rules. Yeah. I didn't sure agree with I that. About that. Whoa. Yeah. We're on the same page. I know, right? What's happening? We're in the Twilight Zone. I'm not sure. I've never been a huge Hunter fan from the beginning. There's just something that doesn't quite sit right with me. So, yeah. And Michael shared his his story with the guys about his late wife. Yeah. And it was her birthday the day before. Mm -hmm. Um, And he also shares that with... Uh, Katie, but she remembers his name, her name as well, his wife's name, which is Laura. Um, and I thought that was really sweet too. And so. then we go to the third date of the episode. A lot of dates, yeah. And it's with which Andrew. This is one of my favorite dates that has been on. And actually, I feel like there's been multiple dates that have been my favorite dates in this season for like all the seasons. I just thought this was a fun, romantic. It was a little awkward in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gorgeous Christmas lights that are hanging down in envelopes and, like, different things that they have to do. But they're it's about sharing with each other. And it's a little awkward in the beginning. And I thought he for sure wasn't getting a rose. But they kind of come together and um, share with each other. And I love that. The -the glow-in-the-dark balloons, my favorite. Did you buy some? I I will buy some. I'm going to put them in our backyard. (laughs) Um, they, they just, they discussed how they were raised and, and parenthood, um, and the reality of being an interracial couple, which, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Those are real life topics. Um, and Andrew said he, he had an ex who was concerned about having mixed children, which prompted an emotional response from Katie, um, because it broke her heart. Yeah. Oh, it was sweet, though. I enjoyed their conversations. And Andrew S. grows on me, I think, every episode. There's always a little, you know, every now and then something weird where I'm like, eh. mm-hmm. but with that happens with everybody, I guess. And so I really like Andrew S., though, and I like their connection. I like him and Michael and some of the others. So, yes. Um, And then we have Hunter coming back into the pic- picture. Ugh. During the cocktail yeah. party, he monopolized time from other men who wanted to talk to Katie. Yeah, which I, this comes up every season, but I do kind of get it. And I mean, Andrew S. kind of sat down and said the same thing, and he had a rose. He was like, yeah, I'd be pissed too as somebody who has a rose stepped in in front of me. Like, you know that you're going to be there. You don't need that time for the rose ceremony. Um, and I could see like, even just stopping by and being like, Hey, I just want you to know I'm thinking of you something like that. Like you can easily touch base with Katie without taking 
all this time. But I mean, when James walked up, Hunter was basically like, no, this is my time. Um, I'm just not a Hunter fan. No, Mm -hmm. me either. Do you know um, that Andrew has connections to the Bachelor franchise? I did not know that. He is Clay Harbor's cousin. Really? Yes. I just Googled to make sure that I was right, but yes. Interesting. So he probably had some coaching, but I still love him anyway. (laughs) I do too. Yeah. But we lost Josh T., Courtney M Ugh. and Andrew M. I'm not gonna lie, Courtney killed me. Courtney killed me a little bit. I like the spelling of his I, name. I would have rather had Courtney stay over like Justin. Yeah. But we're I not just, Katie. We're not Katie. I know. It just sucked. Also, I also made a side comment where I hate it when they always get on the camera and they're like, if I got the rose tonight, it would mean, we know what it would mean. She wants you there. We get it. (laughs) I don't need to talk about it every time. Oh, Amber, they have to do their thing. They have to. Yeah. I guess. So anything else about the bachelorette? Well, I thought it was interesting that as Aaron's trying to give a speech, Hunter interrupts and completes it. Yeah. We don't like so Hunter. We don't like Hunter. No. Hunter can go now. Yeah. And it sounds like, so I don't normally watch like the upcoming scenes for the next episodes or whatever, but it does seem like there is quite a bit of drama, shocker, mm-hmm. um, that is about to take place. Um, it sounds like Michael A. is going to struggle with um, his separation from his child And um, his kid is very young. And so it sounds like he obviously would not understand this and thinks that his dad doesn't want to see him. And um, I think that he leaves. And I think there might be more uh, more individuals that leave. And honestly, I'm still not convinced that the other Blake doesn't show up. Horseman? Yeah. I'd be okay. I mean, I I don't know, but I'm I'm not convinced that he doesn't show up because I think somebody else comes back. Something happens. That's all I'm, I I think. I'm excited to see. I like this season. I'm I'm definitely engaged. Yeah, I like this season as well. I saw a brief rumor that um, Julianne Huff was going to be chosen to try and like oh, wow. uh, shake things up for the Bachelorette the next season, and I was like, that sounds dumb. That's also like two seasons away because after this we have Michelle. I know. Do we know when that's oh. premiering? I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything on that either. But because I, I wonder she's got to be filming right now, right? One would think. But no, because Bachelor in Paradise comes next. Oh, you are right. Yes. Um, wait. Oh. Well, unveiling its fall 2021 schedule, ABC set The Bachelorette for... Oh, wait. I'm reading the wrong thing. I saw 8-7, and I was thinking that was August 7th. But that, that makes make no sense, and that's really just the timeline. Okay. Or, like, the time of the show. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to stay tuned and see what happens. We will. What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you doing? So, I have a new thing that I'm watching. It was actually recommended to me by Ashley. Um, And actually, I I completed it. So, I was watching Mayor of Easttown, which is on HBO Max. And it's got Kate Winslet in it. um, And then it also has James Smart and Evan Peters. Okay. And Evan Peters um, is an actor who I am used to seeing on... um, Oh, American Horror Story. And I love him. He's such a good actor. James Smart in this um, plays Kate, who is mayor, uh, plays her mom. And oh, my God, she cracks me up. It is hilarious. The The show is not hilarious, but every now and then, Mayor's mom, Jane, is hilarious. Um, so Mayor of Easttown is a one. It's a limited series. So there's only seven episodes. And it's based in Pennsylvania. Kate Winslet plays a woman named Mare, who is an investigative detective. 
And while her life is an absolute shambles, she's trying to basically solve the solve a murder of a young woman who um, was left partially naked and beaten up in this like river Creek kind of area in East town. And everyone at some point almost becomes a suspect. And it's really hard going through it and trying to be like, Oh my God, who's going to happen next. But there's multiple storylines and they really do a great job of seven episodes of completing it. Wow. So Nick and I, we didn't quite binge it, but um, we did watch like two or three episodes at a time. And I really enjoyed it. So we finished the episode on Sunday or Monday, I think. And it was really good. Kate Winslet is actually, so her character, Mare, she does an amazing job playing her, but she's not a character that you like. There are many times where I just hate Mare. (sighs) And um, I think that's some of the amazing pieces of it is that your main character, you don't really like. So I highly recommend it. Um, as far as listening to, I'm not listening to any music, but, um, I did finish reading, which listening to, um, my book before she disappeared by Lisa Gardner, which I really enjoyed. Um, and that was about a recovering alcoholic who basically assigns herself, um, as a citizen to go looking for missing persons that the world has kind of forgotten about. And they tend to be minorities and, um, so it's a story about her looking for a missing girl, and I really enjoy it. And now I'm reading um, Her Last Breath, which is uh, kind of like a psychological thriller. My favorite. Uh, where I know. There's a woman by the name of Deirdre who is the main character, and her sister Caro, also known as Caroline, dies um, a sudden death. And while she's at her sister's funeral, she receives an email from her sister saying, if I'm dead, it's because my husband did it. He killed me like he did his first wife. So the story is starting out as um, her it, trying to figure out what truly happened to her, her her sister. Is it murder in Amish country? Is it no. by Linda Casillo? Mm-mm. It's by Hillary Davidson. And it's called Her Last Breath. Yep. <laughs> I really like it so far. I'm looking. So, and it was funny because I always feel like I'm unprepared to give our um, my feedback during our uh, podcast. So I was like looking up stuff and some of the I can't remember which book it was on, if it was before she disappeared or her last breath. But somebody was complaining that it was like too much insight into like a personal person. I'm like, OK, but I really liked so far. I really like her last breath. And um Before she disappeared, Lisa Gardner is one of my favorite authors. So I really liked that book as well. But Um, and it's kind of the story of her like trying to overcome her own demons. So it's like finding these missing individuals as part of her trying to like find herself. And Hillary is with one L. Yes, it is. But my library doesn't have it. Boom. That's a sad day. That is a sad day. Well, and I will say but it is probably a newer book. I think it was just recently released. Oh. And the reason why I'm reading it is because it was offered to me. I Every month I get an offer to read. I get one free book free mm-hmm. every month. And I think this was the one, one of the ones that I chose. So. Got it. What about you? I just binged the latest season of working moms on netflix love it based in canada it's fantastic fantastic i binged it in one night and an episode the next day it was great i love that show um i just finished reading listening to the wrong family by taryn fisher psychological thriller definitely recommend it i don't want to give too much i just started a new book, and it's not a psychological thriller. It's, and I'm really struggling, and I need your advice. So it's called Fierce Self Compassion How Women Can Harness Kindness to Speak Up, Claim Their Power, and Thrive by Kristen Neff. And I'm just not good at listening to these books. Like, I want a story. And then I feel dumb yeah. because I want, like, I'll be driving and be like, oh, I'm not into this. And when I get back in the car, I'm like, 
I don't want to listen to that, so I'll listen to a crime podcast. Do you understand? Do you can you relate? Yeah, yeah. I have a really hard time. Um, like I listen to Anna Kendrick's biography, autobiography. Biographies which, and autobiographies are different. Well, and hers was the first one that I actually listened to because I do like the story, but that is more of a story. But when they're trying to like give advice, like I've been trying to read Lean In for years Mm -hmm. and I do have a hard time with it because the books are my escape yeah so I don't don't I'm not there's nothing wrong with me okay no not at all no I feel like we as women spend so much time trying to be introspective and trying to focus on ourselves and I think that we do it more than men do Mm -hmm. and Nick and I just had this conversation where I was like things mean something to me. Like I'm not just going through the motions of my life. Things mean something. And when I have time to sit and think, I sit and think. But when I'm going to turn on a book, I want a story. I want someone to tell me a story. I don't care if it's a real story or a fake story. I just want to hear it. And I want that to be my place where I get to go away. I get to imagine what these people look like. I get to imagine what they're doing. And I enjoy in th- like just being involved and enthralled in the story as if I'm part of it. Okay, so. good. You just made me feel a hundred times better <laughs> because I'm like, there's yeah. something wrong with me. There is no, something wrong all. with me. And I've bought books that are like that and tried to read them. And I'm like, no, I want to escape. It's an escapism thing for me. Yeah. I mean, I think that if we're in a place like, um, what was the podcast that I used to like self helpless? Mm-hmm. I used to listen to them all the time, but I think that when I was listening to it, I was in a place where I really needed it. So it was okay for me to listen to that. Um, but now I'm doing my own journey and um, it's not something that I necessarily need. And so I'd rather have the story. I'd rather have the takeaway and the escape. Um, so I think that women, we tend to go to the things that we need at the time. And right now, maybe you just don't need that kind of introspection and um I don't even know if that's a word and uh own it girl own it right you're good I wouldn't worry and for music Riley Green has a new um it looks like an EP there's seven tracks called behind the bar and I really like him Ooh, I keep so my favorite group is um brown and gray gray Mm -hmm. and brown I've talked about them a few times. They occasionally release EPs. And so I know they've released a few EPs recently, but um, I just always have their music. It just automatically downloads sometimes. And so I just love their stuff. Music is just good in general. It is. I got an office with a door this week and now I can listen to music and not feel like I'm disturbing the whole world. (laughs) So exciting. It is. It really is. Do you have a wine tip for the week? I am looking at these wine tips and trying to remember which one I've read. Um, Let's see. At a wine tasting event, it is okay to spit the wine out. When attending such events, it is acceptable to take a sip of wine and hold it in your mouth for a few seconds and then decide to swallow or spit. Stop it. It also allows... I didn't go any further. It also allows guests to taste multitudes of wine without getting drunk. And so Nick has always talked mad shit to me when we have been at wine tasting events because I will spit out the wine if I don't like it. And he'll be like, oh, my God, I can't believe you just did that. No, I'm not swallowing this shit if I don't like it. And that goes for everything. So Amber, I'm just saying I didn't say anything, really. (laughs) I just. Said I wasn't gonna swallow it. Okay, so let's have our positive Polly moment, and this is very applicable. Let's look forward and be loyal to our future and not our past. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Was well, there anything else before we go? Well, let me check my notes because I was prepared. I know. Week. Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's July 7th. We're not going to podcast again until the 21st. So we have... Which is the day after your birthday. It is the day after my birthday. It's so funny because I was talking... I have a new employee starting in August. And one of my team members was telling me that um, his start date 
is on his birthday. And it's funny because his drug test is actually on my birthday. And, uh. But I didn't say anything. And so I don't think my team even knows when my birthday is. So unless you fought, like, unless you're Facebook friends with me or something, um, you wouldn't know. So I don't think anybody knows at work or anything like that. And I'm still going to work. I'm still going to be at work on my birthday. No. I just, no, I took, the I mean, off. we're going to Tennessee that weekend. And so, um, if we want to have a nice dinner or something like that, we'll do that. But, um, I just, I don't know. I wish I knew people you worked with because <laughs> I would message them and be like, Hey, your boss no, has well, a birthday. My friend Tiff, she listens to the podcast, but um, she's a few episodes behind. Mm-hmm. She won't get this. She won't listen to this episode. And like, she just recently listened to, um, I think the episode where the plane crashed. Oh, or the plane exploded, and um, the parts fell down. So uh, I think she's behind. So I don't even think she, but she is friends with me on Facebook, but I don't know how often she goes on there. So, yep. I see. Comes and goes. And she works at Children's? She does. Mm. (laughs) You like writing this down? You're going to like search her on Facebook? I'm going to ask you her last name after we stop recording. (laughs) All right, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Make sure to share us, like us, do all the things, and we'll be do back in two yeah. weeks, which is the day after Amber's birthday. <laughs> yep. All right, bye. Bye.